And now we'll talk a little bit about the Browns quarterbacks who played last night. Just two of them, Kellen Mond and Dorian Thompson-Robinson the entire game. Mond in the first half, Thompson-Robinson in the second half. What was your takeaway on Mond, who was 13 for 19 for 92 yards, one touchdown, and one pick? Well, it seemed to me like the more he played, the worse he got, which is not necessarily a good thing, right? I mean, I thought early on when you're just kind of throwing screen passes and boy, did they screen the Jets to death. Uh, and you had a couple swing passes out there to John Kelly. Like, that's fine, you know? And the touch on the, on the swing pass is not something that is all that easy. So I was kind of encouraged by some of the early things. And then he keeps playing, and then he throws this pick, right? And it was kind of like, well, he just didn't think that the linebacker was going to drop and flow into that route at all. And when something like that happens, that's why you throw it to that linebacker because you're thinking, oh, okay, this is guy on the second level. He's not going to carry this route with whatever he's doing. That's probably not something that he's thinking is going to happen. But, you know, he comes back, he throws that little touchdown pass to Kelly there at the end of the first half. And, and that's good. But, yeah, I mean, I, if I'm Kellen Mond, I don't know if I'm all that happy with my performance based on especially that pick. But other things where you're just kind of like, mm, man, you know, for a guy who's been in the league for a couple of years now, you, you expect a little bit better. Yeah, third round pick of the Vikings in 2021 lasted a year there, has been in Cleveland for a while now. And yeah. there's just kind of a stiffness to the way he plays. There isn't yes. a fluidity, if that makes sense. It He yes, doesn't seem it does. comfortable. It just doesn't – It like there's something that's just missing. And if he doesn't – iron that out quickly even with the opportunity for teams to dress three quarterbacks on game day which will presumably entice more of them to carry three on the 53-man roster because you have to have three on the 53-man roster you can't dress that extra third player it's going to be hard for him to hang around sims and i were talking yesterday about the possibility that mond and thompson robinson could make them move on from josh dobbs i don't think we even begin to see enough from mond to make them decide to not keep Dobbs as the game day emergency option for Deshaun Watson because I think that's what he'll be when the season begins and likely will continue to be all year in the event that something happens to Deshaun Watson boom in goes Josh Dobbs and the other guys are just developmental it, it looks like Mond is going to be the guy with the short straw based on what we've seen so far still three preseason games to go yes. a lot can happen but based on last night, it wasn't a great, you know, this is your opportunity, Kellen Mond, to go out there and show that as you enter year three, you're stepping up to a new level. It, it, the step hasn't happened yet. No, it hasn't. And Mike, I, I think that you're absolutely right with the stiffness. That's what I was thinking last night when I was watching. And it's not like we've seen Kellen Mond play all that much, but you do kind of expect some sort of fluidity from your quarterback when he's going into his third year. You don't want that stiffness, that that, that, that stuff where you just can kind of tell that he's thinking, right? That he's not playing instinctually, that it's not necessarily coming all that naturally to him. And when he's been in this system for as long as he has, and it's been over a year now that he's been there, you just kind of, well, maybe about a year actually, it, 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 it's long enough, I think, that you should be able to figure this out. And it just ha seems to be that he hasn't quite done that yet. And, you know, there are, like you said, three more preseason games for the Browns to see what they've got. But we got to remember, like Josh Dobbs came in and acquitted himself very, very well for the Titans on extremely short notice. So I think from that perspective, you know that Josh Dobbs can go out there and he won't necessarily lose a game for you. And now you're seeing if Thompson Robinson or Mon can come in and be the kind of chaos agent third QB that you need. And look, if it doesn't work for Mon, there's no shame in a tour of the XFL or the USFL. Those are viable opportunities now for young players to go get some reps, and maybe it works, and there's a path back to the NFL if you're able to go to one of the lesser leagues and get that chance to have mm -hmm. the game become comfortable, to lose that stiffness, to start to project an image of a guy who's going to go out there and take charge not a guy who's just waiting for the next thing to happen that's going to cause him to think I'm getting closer to the inevitable end and I move on to whatever I do after football. Dorian Thompson, Robinson, fifth-round pick out of UCLA, a guy that Chris Sims really liked. He was number five 
on the Sims list of the incoming quarterbacks for 2023, he looked pretty good. Engineered the game-winning drive. Not that that really matters, but in the microcosm of last night, you go out there, you're competing, it does matter. It gives you an opportunity to go out and prove that that you can achieve something. And these are all guys by the end of the game that are scratching and clawing for roster spots, so it's not like they're going through the motions. They give a crap about this. 8 for 11, 82 yards, a touchdown, 36 rushing yards. Miles, you've mentioned a couple of times you'd like a chaos agent, and it looks like DTR can be that guy. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like Chris Strebler, right? I mean, that's what we saw last year when he came in and played for the Jets. He just kind of runs around. He, he, th- he does things with confidence. Right? So if you're stepping up in the pocket and then you just figure, all right, I'm now I see this. And like what he does right there, he steps up and then he fires it. And then on this play, he you know has a little pump fake. Then he runs, gets the first down, stays in bounds, and continues down the sideline like that. I love to watch stuff like this. Then boom, he throws the block on the touchdown run, which, you know, if you're a quarterback, you don't really want to do those kinds of things. But if you watched DTR in college, which I did being out here in Los Angeles, it's the same kind of thing that he's always done. It's probably why he gets such respect from his teammates. I mean, this is a record setting quarterback at UCLA, which is kind of because he was there for so long, but at the same time, he's got so much playing experience. And I think you can see that when he comes in and he plays like he does. Nothing seemed too big for him last night. And I, I don't think that's everything, right? Because look, you're playing against, you know, third stringers, fourth stringers, whatever, but it's still a different level of football, right? He didn't look very confused by anything and he was able to play instinctually and when you have somebody like that who can come in and just do that that's the kind of chaos age i'm talking about as a third quarterback because look if you're playing a third quarterback in, in a game you know whether you game plan for it or not something bad has happened and you're almost uh screwed regardless right so at least have somebody who can come in and do things with confidence and maybe, you know, make the defense think twice about anything that they want to do. DTR looks like he can be that kind of guy, and I think that's at least very encouraging for the Cleveland Browns. And generally speaking, it is foolish for a quarterback to put himself in harm's way, but when you do it and it works, that is how you win the respect of your your peers, and that's how you begin to lay the foundation to get the locker room behind you, but if you're ever the starter somewhere, that is the dumbest thing that you can do because each one of those plays, each one of those moments is another opportunity to get yourself injured one way or the other. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.